Will you take us to Mount Splashmore? No. 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 Will we take the Mount Splashmore? Yes! Thanks, Dad. Hi, diddly ho, neighborinos, and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks, old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we pay way too much to visit Krusty Land and explore the Simpsons ride, a simulator ride that opened at Universal Studios Florida on May 15, 2008, and Universal Studios Hollywood on May 19, 2008. This attraction was suggested by what seems to be all 30 3,720 Springfieldians, so thank you to everyone for the comments. Also, a huge thank you to the over 10,000 of you who voted in our poll, with over half of the votes for this attraction to be this month's featured video. As always, if there's an attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Based on the animated television series The Simpsons, The Simpsons Ride takes guests on a wacky and wild adventure with Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie while visiting the fabulous Krusty Land. Krusty the Clown's Krusty-themed theme park that Krusty guarantees is in no way a shameless ripoff of other, better theme parks in Florida and California. Krusty's guarantee is neither legally binding nor othered in good fate. Featuring animation that stars the voices from the show's award-winning cast on an 85-foot tall dome screen, the attraction allows guests to experience the longest-running sitcom on television in a brand new, exciting, never before seen adventure. Okay, so for me to properly tell this story of how The Simpsons relocated from Springfield to Universal Studios, I'm gonna need to get into my DeLorean, which I so totally own, accelerate to 88 miles per hour, and travel back to September 7, 2006. Brace yourself, Back to the Future fans, it's about to get heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Universal Studios Florida would announce on this date, Back to the Future the Ride would be closing to make room for a as yet undisclosed new attraction. While no date was given at the time of the announcement, the attraction would officially close on March 30th, 2007. A few months after Florida's had closed, Universal Studios Hollywood would announce on August 3rd, 2007, that their own version of the attraction would officially close on September 3rd, 2007. As part of their new initiative for the parks in the early 2000s and beyond, Universal began to replace many of its current attractions that were based on movies from the 1970s and 1980s with popular movie franchises from the 1990s and beyond in an attempt to draw guests to the parks. While the Back to the Future franchise was a massive success at the box office and its attraction was highly praised, Universal decided that after 16 years of operation, time had run out for the Institute of future technology, as they felt the popularity of both the films and the attraction had begun to dwindle by the mid-2000s. When deciding on what would replace Doc Brown and his amazing flying time-traveling DeLorean, Universal had narrowed it down to two choices. The Universal Pictures film franchise The Fast and the Furious, or 20th Century Fox's animated sitcom The Simpsons. Universal would choose The Simpsons to replace Back to the Future, as the TV series has been a staple of animation and primetime television since making its debut on December 17, 1989, with a record of 30 seasons. Another key reason was due in part to the popularity of The Simpsons movie, which was released on July 27, 2007, and would go on to gross $527.1 million worldwide. It made more sense for Universal to bring in the well-established and much-praised Simpsons instead of Fast and Furious, which wasn't as popular at the time. It would be announced on April 24, 2007, that The Simpsons ride would be coming to Universal Studios Florida and Hollywood. It's a technological marvel, designed for speed, and powered by donuts. 
The Simpsons Ride, coming soon to Universal Orlando Resort. Universal would eventually bring the Fast and the Furious franchise to the parks with its own attraction, Fast and Furious Supercharged, which has been disappointing guests at Universal Studios Hollywood since 2015 and Universal Studios Florida since 2018. <laughs> While The Simpsons would make their debut at Universal Studios in 2008, this wouldn't be the first time Universal attempted to bring the show to its parks. During the planning and development of Universal Orlando's second theme park, Islands of Adventure, Universal and 20th Century Fox began negotiations to give Springfield its very own dedicated area. However, the two sides could not come to an agreement and the idea was dropped. Universal would once again approach Fox in the late 1990s, this time to bring the Simpsons to Universal Studios Florida. This place sure has changed since Disney bought the rights to Cosmic Wars. The concept for the attraction would have been a dark ride around the Simpsons winning a contest to come to Orlando and would have satirized the area's theme parks, a concept that would later be revisited for the actual attraction. However, because of Fox's unwillingness to license the characters at the time, the idea was again dropped and instead Universal would go on to create Men in Black Alien Attack, which opened on April 14, 2000. Planning for the attraction would start two years prior to its opening. The Simpsons creators J. James L. Brooks and Matt Groening, as well as executive producer Al Jean, collaborated with Universal Creative to help develop the ride. The ride features more than 24 characters from the show and features voices of the regular cast members, with the exception of Harry Shearer, who voices characters Mr. Burns, Waylon Smithers, Principal Skinner, Ned Flanders, and others, supposedly due to creative differences. Because of Shearer's absence, none of his characters have vocal parts and many do not appear in the ride at all, and supposedly caused a rewriting of the attraction's story, as the original concept was focused around a field trip to the nuclear power plant, with Mr. Burns playing a crucial role throughout the ride. Construction on the Simpsons ride would begin in May 2007 in Florida and September 2007 in Hollywood. While the basic shape and operation of the Back to the Future building would remain unchanged, the technology would be replaced and updated. The original scissor lifts that lift the ride vehicles and the motion bases on which each vehicles sit on that were created by Intamin were replaced by Oceaneering International. While the attraction still uses the same 85-foot IMAX dome screens, instead of using a 70mm IMAX projector, the ride would use four overlapping Sony SXRD 4K resolution projectors, using custom-made semi-circular fisheye lenses to project the undistorted images at a rate of 60 frames per second. While the queue and pre-shows feature brand new 2D animation which was provided by Film Roman. The animation in the ride uses computer-generated 3D animation rendered by Blur Studio and Real FX. When asked why the change from 2D to 3D, Mike West, executive producer at Universal Creative, said, quote, It was much more difficult than 2D. By the time we go to the dome, we wanted to make an immersive experience. During the pre-show, it was 2D to make it feel like the Simpsons were waiting with you. Once you got on the ride, we wanted a more immersive experience. We wanted wanted the attraction to have an identity of its own, different from what you see on the television show. With the price tag of $30 million, The Simpsons Ride would officially open at Universal Studios Florida on May 15, 2008. The attraction would officially open at Universal Studios Hollywood only four days later on May 19th and had a price tag of $40 million. The attraction pays tribute to Back to the Future the Ride in one of its cue videos, complete with voiceover work from Christopher Lloyd reprising his role as Doc Brown. Professor Frank arrives looking for Doc Brown's Institute of Future Technology, only to find it replaced by Krusty Land Theme Park. He decides to stop it, so we must go back to the future, in which he means the past. He gets into a DeLorean and accelerates into a time jump. Two years ago, a broker is telling Doc Brown that he'll be able to keep the Institute open for years to come. At that point, the DeLorean materializes and runs over the broker. Frank jumps out and Brown yells at him, You ruined everything. Everything. Now I'll have to sell the Institute of Future Technology to that mercenary clown. Krusty promptly pastes a Krusty Land logo over the IFT logo on the front sign. Brown then shows Krusty to his limo, and Krusty tells him to tear tickets at the front gate after he gets a haircut, which Brown is fine with as his hair takes three hours a day to get done. 
comes to Universal Studios. It's the all-new Simpsons ride. Happy times. Don't miss it. Located in the Springfield section of the park at Universal Studios Florida and the Springfield Plaza at Universal Studios Hollywood, guests enter Krusty Land. Krusty the Clown's brand new low-budget theme park. Guests pass underneath a 32-foot tall head of the addiction-riddled smoking clown. What the hell is that? and into the show building, where various television monitors display clips from the TV show, as well as new animated footage for Krusty Land. Once guests have reached the end of the queue, they enter Krusty's Carnival Midway. As guests enter the Midway, there are various booths on each side featuring characters from the show, including Patty and Selma, my dad Hans Moleman, Groundskeeper Willie and Apu, who are working at the park. Krusty appears, welcoming the guests and informing them how much longer the wait will be. Congratulations! The line's almost over! Only 45 more minutes! Just kidding! I have no idea how much longer it is! Krusty warns everyone that the psychopathic killer Sideshow Bob has escaped from prison and is rumored to be in the park, looking to finally get revenge on the Simpsons, who had foiled his plans in the past. Wanting everyone to completely forget about what terrible things might happen at the park if Sideshow Bob has his way. Krusty wants to pick the first family to go on his brand new most extreme thrill ride at the park. Thrilltacular, upsy downsy, spins around the teen operated thrill ride. Someone in a scratchy suit steps on Homer's foot, causing him to yell, Go! prompting Krusty to pick the Simpsons as the lucky family. Krusty tells them to pick another group to go with them on the ride, in which Bart chooses the guests to come along. Guests then enter the pre-flight funhouse by a Krusty crew member. While in the funhouse, guests see Krusty taking the Simpsons backstage, as they pass by where all the wonder and imagination of the park is made, the nuclear reactor. Before they can board the ride, Maggie and Grandpa are told they aren't able to due to certain safety restrictions, as Maggie isn't tall enough and Grandpa having heart conditions that can be aggravated, which proves to be true as he suffers a heart attack, a stroke, and a massive aneurysm while trying to deny he has any heart conditions. Now stuck waiting on a bench, Grandpa suddenly falls asleep while Maggie crawls into the nuclear reactor room, causing her to grow larger. Krusty leads the Simpsons to the ride vehicle and tells them to enjoy the ride. Suddenly, Sideshow Bob appears, who's wearing a scratchy suit, knocking out Krusty and threatening the Simpsons to get into the ride. Bob was able to get around the park undetected after knocking out Barney with the churro, who was working at the park in the Scratchy suit earlier. After watching a safety video featuring Itchy and Scratchy, guests enter into the main ride room and board the eight-passenger ride vehicle. Once guests have boarded the vehicle, Jeremy Friedman, better known as Squeaky Voice Teen, appears and ensures them that their comfort and safety are in the hands of a highly qualified teenager, but to keep the screaming down so he can study for a test, because if he doesn't get a C or high, he'll be kicked out of the audio-visual club. Jeremy's signal is cut off by Sideshow Bob, who tells the guests that he's taken over every area of Krusty Land and there's no place for them to be safe from him. Bob flips a switch from thrilling to killing, which causes the vehicle to rise out of the room to the top of the roller coaster. As the Simpsons are in front of them, the guests' vehicle bumps into the Simpsons, sending both down the roller coaster and starting the ride. The vehicle goes down various turns and drops before Homer gets hit by a wrecking ball controlled by Sideshow Bob before it smashes into the track and breaks it. The wrecking ball eventually breaks free and starts to chase Homer and the guests before eventually knocking both of them off the coaster. The guests enter the Happy Little Elves and Panda Land attraction with Bart and Lisa, who believe they are now safe since they're on a kiddie ride. This isn't the case, as Bob appears, now in control of a massive animatronic panda bear, sending the guest vehicle along with Bart's and Lisa's crashing throughout the entire attraction. Guests then enter the Captain Dinosaur Source pirate ripoff joining Homer and Marge. After plunging down a waterfall, Bob appears as a projection on the second waterfall within the attraction and tells everyone to resist the temptations he has placed inside. Homer immediately ignores Bob's warning as he goes to grab a beer and a ride, which triggers a trap that destroys everything, causing Homer and the guests to exit out of the attraction and into Krusty's wet and smoky stunt show. With the entire Simpsons family now reunited, they try to escape the attraction before 
Bob can finish them off, as the guest's vehicle follows them after being tied to a killer whale that Lisa is riding. With nowhere to run, Bob confronts the Simpsons and cuts a hole down to hell. Before the Simpsons and the guests can meet their demise, Maggie, who is now giant-sized after entering the reactor room, appears and grabs Bob. Maggie slams Bob into the guest's vehicle, knocking it into the hole. Before it can reach the depths of hell, Professor Frink arrives at the last moment and saves the guests. Bob steals Maggie's pacifier and tells her in order for her to get it back, she must destroy Springfield. Guests then travel through Springfield with many references to the opening sequence of the TV show. The guests encounter Maggie again, who mistakes their vehicle for a brand new pacifier and sucks on them repeatedly before spitting them out. The vehicle gets spit out onto the overhead power lines and catapults guests into the Simpsons' house by crashing right through the garage. The Simpsons believe they are now safe back on their couch until Kang and Kodos appear, who have turned the house into Krusty's death drop. The Simpsons and guests are dropped out of the sky and eventually back to the entrance to Krusty Land. Guests encounter Bob one more time, who only has five seconds to kill them before the ride is over. Before Bob is able to, the couch, along with the Simpsons, crushes him. Maggie appears and pushes over the massive Krusty Land head. The vehicle is lowered back into the room, where guests see the aftermath of what has just happened with mist, fire, and smoke effects. In the Florida version, Krusty appears from the command room and pushes an emergency button causing the vehicle to vibrate. In the Hollywood version, Krusty is sitting in a control room and takes a picture of the guests. Guests unload from the ride vehicle and exit the attraction. Nearby the attraction is the Quickie Mart, where merchandise of the attraction and TV show are sold. The 4 minute, 30 second attraction has been well received with guests since opening, as many have praised the ride's theming and visuals, along with its story as one of the most well written ever for an attraction, capturing the same tone as an episode from the TV series. While the attraction is a must ride for anyone who is a huge fan of The Simpsons. Its reception among Universal theme park fans has been less than stellar, as many feel the attraction isn't a worthy successor to Back to the Future the Ride and has already become outdated after only 10 years, due in part to just being a re-theming of the original attraction without any major upgrades. On July 14, 2008, the Universal Studios Florida version would host the 1 millionth rider, reaching the milestone faster than any other attraction at the resort until Harry Potter and the Forbidden journey would break the record in August 2010. The Simpsons ride would go on to win the 2008 Thea Award for Outstanding Achievement of an Attraction by the Themed Entertainment Association. What it is about Universal Orlando that always makes me want to come back with my family is, quite frankly, from the staff to the great characters uh, behind us, uh, you know, it's always such a great time. What's cool about The Simpsons is the fact that they're such iconic characters, and now they're certainly part of, uh, part of Universal with a big movie, and kids get a chance to see them, and with a great ride, can't beat it. I get to come here, I get to hang out with The Simpsons, I hang out with Spider-Man, I get to hang out with superheroes all day, it's awesome. While The Simpsons ride would officially open in 2008, Universal wasn't finished bringing The Simpsons world to life at its parks. When the attraction opened at Universal Studios Florida, one minor complaint guests had was that The Simpsons ride didn't quite fit in with the area of the park it was located in. Known originally as the World Expo, the area was designed as the setting of a World's Fair and was meant as a way to accommodate such attractions as Back to the Future the Ride and Men in Black Alien Attack. Since neither didn't quite fit in with the rest of the themed areas in the park. Due to the nature and theming of the Simpsons ride, it made no sense to include it in the World Expo area. In order to satisfy the situation, Universal Orlando announced on May 23, 2013, the remainder of the World Expo area that wasn't re-themed after the closure of Back to the Future the ride would be transformed into Springfield, the town that is home of the characters from the Simpsons. Within the new area would be a brand new family attraction attraction, food and beverage options, photo opportunities, and new meet and greet characters. Construction on the transformation of the area would begin in early 2013. Just like Hogsmeade in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal's Islands of Adventure, Springfield would be a dedicated and immersive area of the park to make guests feel like they were actually in a town located in the state that borders Ohio, Nevada, Maine, and Kentucky. The area includes numerous dining options, including Krusty Burger, the Frying Dutch 
Richmond, Cletus's Chicken Shack, Lisa's Tea House of Horror, and Luigi's Pizza, along with Moe's Tavern and Duff Gardens, where guests can purchase a Duff beer, which is only available at the park. A brand new children's attraction, Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl, would also come to the area. Fast Food Boulevard, which consisted of the dining options in Moe's Tavern, would open as the first phase of the expansion on June 1st, 2013. A second phase consisting of Lard Lad Donuts, Duff Gardens, Phineas Q Butterfats, and Bumblebee Man's Taco Truck would open on August 2nd, 2013, and King and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl would open on August 11th, 2013. Reception to the new area of the park was met with positive reviews, as the theming and immersiveness makes guests feel like they're actually in Springfield, and a breath of fresh air to the area of the park that was lacking any direction after Back to the Future the ride had closed. Just like Florida's, Universal Studios Hollywood would open its own Springfield-themed area on May 13, 2015. On June 20, 2018, it was announced the Walt Disney Company had come to an agreement to acquire 21st Century Fox for $71.3 billion, with the deal becoming official on March 20, 2019. The Simpsons, which is owned by 20th Century Fox and is included as part of the deal, is now part of the Walt Disney family. <laughs> Good. They were just first. Many in the theme park industry have speculated what will become of the Simpsons at Universal theme parks because of the New Deal. While details of the contract between 20th Century Fox and Universal over the Simpsons has never been officially revealed, rumors have stated the contract is for 20 years, slated to expire in 2028. It's still too early to tell what the future will hold for the Simpsons at Universal theme parks, as it could be possible that the show, which has been on the air for over 30 years, might finally make its curtain call by the time the contract is set to expire. The Simpsons Ride is a showcase of over 30 seasons of characters, storylines, and humor that has made the TV show so widely popular all around the world. The attraction is a must-ride for any Simpsons fan, as its story and setting feels like straight out of an episode, joining Homer, Marge, Bort, Lisa, and Maggie in an experience designed to duplicate the Simpsons' home viewing experience, only at high speeds and with lots of screaming. While there's no knowing when the show and attraction will eventually call it quits for good. There's no denying how important the Simpsons have been in both the television industry and at Universal Studios theme parks. So that is the theme park history of the Simpsons ride. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. If there's any attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, Apu, would you do us the honor? Thank you, come again. Shh. Hello? Itchy and Scratchy Land open for business! Who are you to resist it, huh? Come on, my last paycheck bounced! My children need wine!